three. Plus one, two, six. <laughs> you know, so far we are, on, we, are, we are still in the street. <laughs> Anyways, I begin and then you continue. Yeah. To the angel of the church in Sardis, write. These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Amen. Remember then what you were taught and what you heard. Obey it and turn from your sins. If you do not wake up, I will come upon you like a thief, and you will not even know the time when I will come. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. Or you can say clothes, yeah? They will walk with me, dressed in white, for they are worthy. Someone is wondering. That's right. <laughs> he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. If you have ears, then listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. Hallelujah. So this scripture is, is talking about the coming of the Messiah. And indeed, the Lord is using these letters to prepare the church for the coming of the Messiah. <coughs> Preparing the church with repent and prepare the way. Amen. So because he is cleaning up the church so that when the time of the Messiah's coming finally arrives, the church will be found ready. So, we talked about verse 1 and 2. And we found ourselves uh, at this place where we were talking about the church in Sardis being rebuked for not being perfect because he's saying, I've not found your works finished, or your works are not finished, or your works are not complete, or your works are not perfect in, in my father's, or in, in the sight of my God. And we tried to explain what this perfection is. Amen? And we said, despite the flesh, the Lord has called us to. Perfection and holiness, first Corinthians, was in 2 Corinthians 1, 7 1. One of, one of those two. 2 Corinthians 7 1. Done. And, uh, and so we said, so now the Lord here is, is rebuking uh, uh, Sardis for imperfection. Then what is this perfection? We said, this perfection that he wants Sardis to have is essentially spiritual maturity. Amen. Where he's talking about. A spirit, achieving the spiritual stature of Christ. Amen? So, uh, so we, we, we set out on a journey yesterday, last, uh, last time to talk about this perfection now, this maturity. So what is it that characterizes a spiritual, a spiritually mature person? Amen? A man or a woman of God that is spiritually mature. In such a way that when you look at this person, da? There will be no ambiguity as to their spiritual state. Amen. You can see that this is a man, this is a man <laughs> who is surely mature in the world. Amen. <coughs> but mind you, you see, maybe I should say a little bit, that spiritual maturity does not necessarily mean praying longer or praying louder. Amen. Because you find some brothers, they pray very loud. Amen. When you're in the prayer room, when you're in a prayer meeting, they, they can pray very loud and you think, wow, this brother is on fire. No? <laughs> and then uh, in a few days time, you, not to say that praying loud or, or, or praying, you know, like with such uh, ferociousness is in and of itself a bad thing. But I'm saying that is not, that is not a, a, a a mark in and of itself that quantifies someone to be spiritually mature because a brother can pray so strong like that. But this brother, you hear some very unusual things about him. Just for instance, now, you find this brother falls into sexual sin, just like that. But you, he, 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 of course, he will not tell you, but uh, but you, 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 you will be able to see the fruit that Someone can pray very, 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 very uh, passionately, 
but their lives are not consistent with that prayer, with those prayers they give so passionately. Yeah? Because sometimes, especially when we are together like this, it's, it's, it's easy to put on a show. Amen? Especially when you only meet once in a week or whatever. And so to really look at someone and the way they dress uh, is, does not in and of itself uh, characterize someone as spiritually mature. It is an important aspect. Amen. We have spoken about dressing holy and dressing righteously. But just because someone comes and dressed, you know, in a very powerful way does not mean that this person is spiritually mature. Amen. Of course, Satan can come here wearing a very powerful suit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so and so there are other things. These are add-ons. These are other things that complement that spiritual maturity. The spiritual maturity leads to such things as dressing well. Amen. That because you know well the requirement of your God, and you are walking in that highway of holiness, now you begin to dress well. But now your prayer life, you know, you pray with so much passion. So, you know, people can put on, for instance, you know, false tears. Uh, today I, I, I was watching a video on uh, apologetics, and this guy was talking about this certain man who went to Bible school, but he's an atheist. So he went to Bible school just so that he can learn about the Bible, so that he can criticize it. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. He went to Bible school, graduated from Bible school, then went to teach in university. People went to teach them not to believe in the Bible. So, so, so even to say because just because someone went to Bible school, it's not, it's not even, does not even qualify anyone to be spiritually mature. Mm -hmm. you know? Of course, you find them in Bible school watching pornography. Unfortunately, oh yes, absolutely. So, so some of these things are just, uh, uh, the, the <clears throat> they're just the things that we see on the top. As, as Jesus said wolves in sheep clothing so you just see this something that looks like a sheep clothing so for you to really understand whether this is a wolf or a sheep there are other things that must emanate forth yeah? and, uh, and that of course begins with the spiritual transformation of one's heart amen uh, and so and, 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 and one that has truly been it, it begins with it begins with being born again Hallelujah. of course coming to the uh, to, 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 to the realization that one needs salvation in Christ Jesus when you have repented now as a child of God da? so so now say now that you are a child of God da? you have repented so what is this journey now spiritual maturity da? of course it begins with the word of God because everything we need is here that means that one that grows on to to grow into that spiritual stature of Christ is one who is an astute student of this of the scripture ha. Which, someone who is an ardent student of the scripture. Someone who is uh, deeply rooted in the word of God. Amen. That means we begin with the word of God. So that everything that we do, so that everything that you do is commanded from there, from there on. Amen. So that the word of God becomes your mission, your, com your command. The word of God becomes the place where you launch your mission. Hallelujah. And, and it, within the word of God, you begin to realize that, with, you begin to realize that this word is hinged on two very, very important uh, uh, benchmarks in the kingdom of God. Amen? Which is righteousness and justice. Hallelujah. Of course, you can say holiness as well. Amen? Because you find in the book of uh, Psalm 89, verse 14, it says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of God's throne. Hallelujah. Mercy and truth, they go before Him. Amen. And when you go to the book of Isaiah chapter 1, then the Lord begins to rebuke the Israelites. And then He brings out two things that were missing in the, in the, in the, in the, in the house of Israel. But when you go to chapter 5 that we read also a few weeks ago, we found that in chapter 5, he raises righteousness and justice as well. Because there you find him saying, I looked for righteousness and I didn't find it. I looked for justice and there was none. In fact, he found murderers and thieves. 
Amen. So these are two very, so that as a, as a child of God now, as you begin to grow in the word, that as you begin to grow, two things that will become very essential in this growth process is righteousness and justice. And from there on begins your ministry. Amen. From there on begins your ministry. Uh, I, sh I shared here some time, I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, one time when I talked about righteousness, uh, I talked about uh, righteousness being the foundation, yeah? We talked about love. Hallelujah. How that love is righteousness at work. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah? And then I said that, so everything that you as a Christian do, everything that you do, finds its genesis in righteousness. Amen. Finds its beginning, finds its source in righteousness. Because essentially, when, when, when love is missing in your life, when mercy is missing, when uh, forgiveness is missing, when, uh, 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 what is it? When brotherly <coughs> kindness is missing, when hospitality is missing, the Lord looks at you and he says, unrighteous. So he couples these things together and he says, unrighteousness. Hallelujah. And when you begin to walk in this, in this way of holiness and merciful, merciful kindness, and you begin to walk in patience and all this fruit of the Holy Spirit, he looks at you and he says, righteous living. He says, this is what characterizes righteous living. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's very, very central to our faith. And, and a Christian, if you do not understand righteousness, you are very prone to abusing the grace of God. Because you see that in the beginning, when he created the male and female, we understand that they walked with God in the cool of the day. Amen. In the cool of the day, they walked with him. The Lord right here, and Adam right here, excuse me, and uh, walking in the cool of the day, talking, having a conversation, and the Lord sharing with mankind his wisdom and his love for them. Amen? And then, they sinned. Then what transpired from there is what we're experiencing until today. Banishment out of the garden. Hallelujah. And we see that when he banished them, that was an act of justice. Amen. Because he said, <coughs> because he said, if you eat from it, you shall surely die. Hallelujah. Both spiritually and physically. And so, that was righteous, I mean, justice in action. That, when they did not obey the law, the command, the one instruction the Lord gave them, that would have guaranteed them eh, that, that if they had obeyed it well, they would have been guaranteed an opportunity, a very golden opportunity to be held in the hand by the Lord God Almighty. And he would have taken them on that road that leads or on that way, on that path that leads to the tree of life. And they would have eaten of it. And until today, we would have been living without death in the world. Amen? So his justice disciplined them. Until today it is in action. Amen? So you see, very important. When there is sin, justice takes its course. Amen? And when there is... So when they before they sinned, they were walking in righteousness. Hallelujah. So now, in this righteous living, this high standard, this standard of maturity, Hallelujah. Because we see that in this standard of living that he's called us to is where now this maturity is, uh, is exhibited. Uh, we, we see that when he created them in the garden as well, did I say in the garden? When he created them in Genesis, he, we said, seven days of creation, yeah? And, and that process was a process of spiritual transformation. Amen? That begins with separation. On the seventh day he rested. So, 
this spiritual growth that begins with separation three times like this. Amen. And we see that the culminating point of that spiritual <coughs> transform of that spiritual transformation that begins with separation, the culmination thereof is the bearing of the image of God. Amen. For now he says, let us make men. So now the, he says, let us make men in our own image. So now creation is bearing his image at the culminating point of creation. Amen. So this road map that he set forth in, in Genesis chapter 1, this process of spiritual growth that culminates in bearing the image of Christ. As it says in the book of uh, uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 29, it says, those whom he, uh, whom he predestined, he also, uh, those who he foreknew, he predestined to be, to, uh, to be conformed into the image of the Son, so that those that are born again are the ones who are bearing the true image of Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, I hope you are following me, or I hope I'm not getting you lost. You understand, yeah? So spiritual transformation, spiritual growth. I'm st still talking about spiritual maturity, amen? So then that means the place of spiritual maturity is the place of where, wherein when you are walking, you are essentially emitting the glory of the Lord. When you are walking, wherever you are, you are bearing the image of Christ. Amen. And there are many places for that. There's a scripture that we just quote, Beloved, da? that uh, we do not know what we shall be when we see him. But we, know, but we know that when we see him, we shall be just like him. Now that's another level of transformation and, and, and glorification, just as he is. Da? And so in that process now, there is now other elements of maturity, which are, uh, such as the fear of the Lord. Or should I say, first of all, let me say wisdom. Amen. That spiritual maturity is characterized by wisdom. So now, it's as if you say, see, this is righteousness here in the big column. Then you say righteousness now, which is really the, the, the highest spiritual stature, the, the stature of spiritual maturity. Now, these there are these points now which characterize this righteousness. Who is that? You're welcome. So now this righteousness is characterized by such things as wisdom. Amen. For it says in the book of James, it says, uh, If anyone is lacking wisdom, let him ask. From who? From God who gives to, gives all to all liberally or generously. Where is that? Chapter 1, verse 5. Huh? Oh. Yes, if anyone lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. Amen. Wisdom is a necessity for the Christian life. <coughs> Hallelujah. Without wisdom, the opposite is true. Foolishness. Amen. Uh, manifested forth in different levels, of course. <laughs> now, now, wisdom is very important. Now, we have one at one time here, this devotion <coughs> talked about wisdom, righteous uh, wisdom, uh, knowledge, and understanding. Yes. Amen. So, 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 but we look first at wisdom, and this wisdom is essentially the fear of the Lord. Amen. For behold, the fear of the Lord that is wisdom. Amen. And we know that in the book of Matthew chapter 25 there were there were two groups of virgins or two groups of Christians that were waiting to enter heaven and we understand that only one group made it and these are the ones who were wise amen, amen. meaning these are the ones who beheld the fear of, of the Lord these are the ones who observed the fear of the Lord in their lives. Amen. But you see, you understand that indeed this is the fear of the Lord in their lives. But when 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 you uh, when you when you look at a book like uh, is that Colossians, somewhere there it says, in fact, 
Christ Jesus has been made unto us wisdom. Amen. Let's see if we can find that. He says, Christ Jesus has been made unto us wisdom. Meaning that when you are walking in wisdom, you are exuding for the character of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So that means you cannot walk in this way of holiness without wisdom. And, and wisdom is very, uh, very important because it gives you such things as discretion. Discretion, the ability to be able to distinguish between righteousness and sin. Amen. To be able to distinguish between a child of God and one who is pretending to be a child of God. Because it says that no wonder even Satan himself, he must create himself. And then he appears as if he's an angel of light. So it says, now with wisdom, you are able to read between the lines now. With wisdom, you are now able to be distinguish. You are able to distinguish between demonic, so-called, de some people, they say it's a revelation. Yeah? Because you find in the revelation, it says, there are some people who apparently, they are following some form of knowledge. But it's really demonic teachings. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so it says, some of them, they call themselves Jews, but they are really of the synagogue of of Satan it says now for you to be able to distinguish between those who are truly Jews or those who are truly born again and those who are the synagogue of Satan it says now you need wisdom because without it you look at them and you say they are going to church eh? they are going to church ah they are all born again <laughs> uh, first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 verse, first Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 hallelujah can you read that first mm -hmm. do you mind but of him you are in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. who became for us wisdom from Amen. God, Amen. and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Uh, that is, as it is written, uh -huh. he who glorifies, let him glory in the Lord. Amen. He has been made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification. Wisdom. Hallelujah. Amen. And he says, without this wisdom, <clears throat> you look at the two, two men in the book of Luke 7, or is it six? He says, <coughs> says, He that hears my word and does not do them <coughs> is like a man who went out to sow. Not so, to went out to build. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then he looks at another one, he says, He that hears my word, wait, he that hears my word and does them mm -hmm. is like a man who went out to build. Mm -hmm. Another one, he that hears my word and does not do them mm -hmm. is like a man who went out to build. Hallelujah. So they both went out to build. But you see that they both heard. The one heard and did. One heard and did not do what he was told. He did other things. So now, it says, it is only wisdom that will help you to see who is really obeying the words of the master. Because, even though they both went out to build, and one was building on the rock and one was building on sand, and they were both building the same structure, a house. Amen? Uh, he says, if you just look at it from the outside and you don't really have wisdom, you think, ah, at least they are all building. What's your problem? Let him build. He's building on the sand. Yeah, at least he's going to live. He's living, he's, at least he's building a house to live in. <laughs> and, you see, and you say, this one is building on the rock. Very good. They are both building. They are both, you know, on the right track. But he's saying, that in the way they are building, the place wherein they are building, says that ex, that that shows forth either their obedience or their disobedience. Amen. Hallelujah. So what I'm saying is, wisdom helps you to distinguish, or should I use the word, to judge righteously. Amen. To judge correctly, to judge with justice. Jesus said, "Let your judgment be." Just, or it says, judge with justice, something like that. It says, uh, uh, because if you do not judge justly or wisely, you be you end up condemning the righteous and acquitting the sinners. Amen. So, wisdom, very important characteristic of spiritual maturity. Hallelujah. We have a, 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 a child of God who is really mature. Another thing, let me just do this quickly, is forgiveness. 
is one who walks in the spirit of forgiveness. And this is coupled with the spirit with mercy. Uh, now, I, 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 I'll not go too deep on this, but this is very, very important. Very important. Because then that means this one does not take revenge. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we feel like we are wronged. Unjustly. How can they do that to me? No? Oh, I don't deserve that. So, but he says, when you are spiritually mature, you'll be able to forgive freely and willingly. Amen. Someone said, no, they must dance to the music. Whatever the, 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 the case is. But he's saying, because people, people, and people have all kinds of concerns, you know, what, what if he did, you know, what if, what if such and such thing happened? But Christ is saying, forgive even as your heavenly father has forgiven you. Now, remember, you can never out-forgive God. <laughs> Amen. So forgiveness. But there's also another thing that characterizes a spiritual, a, a, you know, one of one who is high, one who is spiritually mature. Uh, uh, we, we spoke about wisdom. We spoke, we spoke about forgiveness. No? We speak about the tongue. That this one uh, knows how to speak, what to speak, what to say, when to say it, and when not to say it. Amen. Because it says, even a fool, when he is quiet. Is considered wise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He says, just because you talk too much doesn't mean you are wise. No. Many people speak so many things very fast. Some some can speak fast. Some can write long volumes of columns or whatever. Some write so many books, yet they all amount to nothing. But he's saying, if you are spiritually mature, you'll be able to control your tongue. He says, slow to speak and quick to listen and slow to get angry because he says because the anger of man does not want does not need the does not produce the righteousness of God you see that he says because the anger of man righteousness is not there see that's where forgiveness comes in now you see all these things how they work together yeah? but that's just the tip of an iceberg just a tip, tip of an iceberg. Uh, may the Lord help us. Hopefully we'll, we'll get deeper, but may the Lord really help us to, uh, to be, to grow into that spiritual stature of Christ and to stay there. Amen. Because the devil is always looking for ways to bring us down. The devil. As I said, I was watching a video yesterday of one, uh, I asked you his yeah, if you know him, he was a very, very popular musician and, and still is, and a, and a very fiery preacher who rebuked sin and all these things. And two th one thing killed his ministry. Now he's still in ministry, but one thing brought his ministry like this. You know when you are wrestling, they bring you down like this and hit you on the ground. <laughs> mercilessly so this one thing and I know you already know what it is this one thing <laughs> grabbed, his, grabbed his ministry a tie like this and threw him on the ground like this and said stay there and then he tried to raise up and it got him again and pulled down and said you stay right here <laughs> I think that's what we have to do. <laughs> I think that guy is very dangerous. Hey. And mind you, now of course there are many stories, but this one, after he rebuked sin for so many years, the devil used a prostitute. This man is mad. Oh, yeah, it's in Proverbs now. <laughs> yeah, it's in Proverbs. It's like I saw this woman wearing like a prostitute. A tie of a harlot. Then her job was to entice this young man. Eh? And one, what did he say? He said, I saw a young man. What did he say about the young man? He says, look, one who, let, who looked like he lacked common sense, something like that. He lacked wisdom. Yes. He says, so he looked at this young boy, just walking about, like a walkabout. Eh? Uh-huh. 
I looked through the lattice and saw among the simple, I perceived among the youth, a young man devoid of understanding. Mm. What does what, what does the seven seven? And I saw among the simple, uh. the city of, uh, among the youths, uh. a young man devoid of understanding. Oh, yeah, I'm reading. King James. Okay, you are reading King James. Now yeah. let me read in NIV. Yeah. Once I think one says, and I saw some foolish, <laughs> simple-minded, immature, <laughs> immature men. Yeah. And I, I noticed one of them had no wisdom, had no sense, yeah, like no common sense. <laughs> Expanded. Yeah. Who had no sense? This one said he had no sense. A young man lacking sense. Void of good sense. And then, when and you then read, the prostitute. And then when you read 26 and yeah. 27, then you see what she did. What did she do to him? 26. Yeah. Or what she does. Uh -huh. What is it down there? <laughs> what is it? Profession. Cast down many mighty men. Cast down. Like this. Those who were slain by hell were uh -huh. strong men. Were strong men. Not just hell. Uh, house is the way to hell. Uh -huh. Descending to the chamber. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one. Uh, he says, when you're walking down to that path, eh? it's like a slaughter, it's like a goat, uh, cattle going to slaughter. This man, well respected, I said, wow, sexual sin, prostitute one time, then came back up, and then again prostitute, and then again prostitute. We have to be careful, guys. With, we really need wisdom. He says, this one lack wisdom. That means only when we have no wisdom will we fall for this Sexual sin. Yeah? It's charging, trying to find place in your heart. Say, so just accommodate me just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. You know, say, ah, but, but the man is married. We have to be careful. We have to watch out. We have to pray. We have to you know, repent before the Lord. We have to commit to the Lord, he says. Because when you hear, when you understand that fear of the Lord, he says, I mean, the, yes, that fear of the Lord. Meaning, you tremble before the Lord. That we are not going to entertain such evil things. But this temptation is not only for some people. No? It's not only reserved for some men. Nevertheless, it has brought down many that are at the top. No? But let us not forget that the Lord is also taking us to the top. The Lord is taking you to the top. And when you are there at the top, watch out. It says, let him that stand be careful lest he falls. Because sexual sin wants to humiliate you and keep you from entering. Because sexual sin wants to silence you. It's one of the big silencers. <laughs> if you're caught in sexual sin, eh? <laughs> You begin to mumble. <laughs> if you are a man of eloquent words, you begin to hide. Mm -hmm. And there was another one. The Lord elevated me on TV representing other pastors, Christian community. And then sexual sin got him like this, and then, pa! Until today. And when it brings you down, how? To get up from there. Because now trust has been broken. Because for people, if for, for people to believe you again and listen to your message like before, even though you are preaching the same message as before, now a majority of people have lost trust. Those that most of the people who are to believe in you again or to believe your message are those who have never heard of you. you <laughs> duh? If you want to come back to the top, maybe you will need someone who has never heard of you, and a lot of them, <laughs> and to overcome the critics, because now the trust has been broken. And now all, all, all those that are very faithful and loyal to you, who say, I will stick with you no matter what. But we don't want to get to that place. Ah, we don't want sexual sin to bring us down. And then to say, okay, now I'll try to get myself up. Yeah? You shake off this dust. I can do all things. Yeah, you can do all things. But remember, he says, mighty man, to the dust. Say, where are you going? 
So, we, so as we navigate in these deadly waters, let us always keep our eyes on the Lord. Amen. Amen. Ah, it's true. We are playing sports. We are preaching the gospel. Eh? And it, it has no respect. It has no respect. doesn't matter where you are. Even though you think you are not important. Even though you think you are not important in society. doesn't matter what self, what self, what is the, what is the, self-esteem. doesn't matter your self-esteem. If that one gets you, <laughs> the grip like this, ah, may the Lord keep us from such. I pray it will not be a portion. Amen. Amen. You know, I say, there are so many, of course, there are many who have fallen, but you see, there are so many men who have made it, even the Lord Jesus himself. Let us keep up, let us, let us emulate the example of these men who have preached the gospel, until today, they still have a good testimony. Amen. Let us embrace that testimony. You know, some of them, they have, they have preached the gospel, they have been persecuted, whatever, they have been lonely, but they, but they have preached. And the more faithful you are, the stronger your message becomes. And the more sin you overcome, you preach this gospel, and the day the Lord calls you, your bow will be very high. Amen? But if you sin, he'll bring you from here to here. If you overcome that sin, the, your message remains stopped like this. And the devil will never silence your message again. He will never silence it. That's why until today, Jesus' message still stands strong. So Satan can never silence the Lord. He tries to bring up Da Vinci to, to try and accuse the Lord of, of sexual immorality. Ah, because the testimony is stronger than the false accusation. When they say, ah, this man is a blasphemer, let us kill him. They killed him. But because of that integrity, until today, his critics are silent. Of course, some of them, they are trying, yes, I said, they are going to Bible school to try and prove us wrong, da, 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 da. But the message is still strong. The more they criticize, the stronger it becomes. In fact, the more you persecute Christians, yeah, the stronger, <laughs> the, the more stronger they become, and the more fiery, and the more people become born again. <coughs> Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We bless you. We give you glory and honor. Help us, Lord, to stay away from sexual sin. And we thank you, Lord, that you are preparing us for the coming of the Messiah. Thank you for the mighty prophet that you have sent us to prepare the church of Christ all over the world. Help us, O Lord, to observe the fear of God in our heart, the fear of the Lord, and that we may, O Lord, inherit the kingdom of God. <clears throat> that the devil may never silence our words, our voice. That he may never silence our testimony. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I just have to talk about that one because... <laughs>